In the preceding modules, we have learned quite a bit about Excel. Let's now try to integrate all of these by looking at a case study. This case study is going to involve profit forecasting for an imaginary organization. And what we are trying to do is this. So once we have finished the job, our spreadsheet is going to look like this. So what we are trying to do is to create a projected income statement for a company, ABC Inc. And uh, we are starting from the year 2017 and we want to make forecasts up to the year 2021. And these are income statements. So we want to find how many units we're going to sell, what is the price, what is the sales revenue, etc., etc., up to profits. Okay, so we are trying to do a pro forma financial statement. And you can see here, as we have been recommending strongly, we have isolated all the assumptions. For this case study, I actually recommend that you follow along as I am describing the case study, right? But a small caveat. Don't try to follow along for every single slide because then what will happen is that you will get hung up in simply being able to replicate what is going on in the slide and you won't, you may not have the time to actually grasp what is going on. So what I recommend is watch four or five slides just without doing anything on your computer. Just watch the slides with intense focus trying to understand what's going on, understand the concepts, then pause the video, go back and try to replicate those steps. Okay, of course, I'm not saying you have to replicate it without looking at the screen. You can always take the video back a little bit, see what's going on, and then repeat the process on your computer. So by the time I finish demonstrating what is going on here on the slides, by the end of that period, you will also have this complete model replicated on your computer, right? So this is the time you're really going to learn uh, uh, to put together all of the skills that we have understood uh, so far in Excel. Right? And of course, as you can see here, in addition to using the concepts that we've already learned, uh, lots of uh, bells and whistles, additional bells and whistles uh, will also be covered as we do this. So you'll get some practice doing those things as well. Because till now, I have focused entirely on Excel concepts. Now what we are trying to do is to translate that into Excel practice. And that's what we'll be seeing in this case study. Okay then, we are ready to get started. So first, before we actually begin looking at it in Excel, let's understand some of our planning inputs. Because after all, we are trying to create a pro forma or a forecasted income statement for a company. So we need to understand some of our input data based on which we'll be doing this income statement. Okay. So we already know that we are doing this statement for the years 2017 to 2021, the five years. Uh, we are given that the number of sales units in 2017, that is the number of units of our product that we expect to sell in the year 2017 is 100,000. And that the price in the year 2017 is going to be $10 per unit. Okay, this is price per unit of the product, it's $10. Further, we are also told that the number of units sold is going to grow at the rate of 2.25% per year which means in 2018, it's going to be 2.25% more than 100,000. In 2019, it'll be 2.25% more than 2018, and so on. Similarly, the sales price is going to grow at an annual rate of 5%. Now, that could be because we are trying to keep up with inflation, or it could be because we expect that our product will be getting improved over time, and therefore we will be able to charge more for it. Okay, so these are our initial planning inputs. And these, of course, constitute some of the assumptions based on which we'll build our spreadsheet. And therefore, we want to isolate these assumptions. That's very important, right? Because for example, after you finish the whole process, if the, if the manager comes along and says, you know what, our sales units in 2017 is not going to be 100,000, it's going to be 125,000, right? If you had hard-coded this 100,000 into several formulas, now you have a big problem of going to uh, going and having to change that to 125. Whereas if we isolate the assumption, all you have to do is to go to that one cell, just change it, and everything else is taken care of. So that's really something we want to take care of right away. Up front, we want to take care of that in the design of our spreadsheet. So the first thing we want to do is to set up the years 2017 to 2021. Of course, that requires that we enter the values 2017 all the way to 2021 in the cells B3 through F3. One way to do that is to simply manually enter 
the years. Okay. Now that's all right since there are only five years we can do that manually but what if there were 20 or 25 or even 50. Right. So in that case entering all those 50 values manually would be very time consuming. So let's look at a way by which Excel allows us to automate this. Okay. So that's what we're going to look at. So how do you automate this? First of all let's enter the two years 2017 and 2018 in the cells B3 and C3 and then we want to select both of those cells together as the diagram shows. In order to select both the cells together what you're going to do is to first select the cell B3 which contains 2017 and then while with that selected simply drag to also include C3. Okay. Now here I'm not talking about dragging the fill handle. I'm saying select the cell and simply drag that selection over so that you select multiple cells. Right? So now both of these cells 20, uh, B3 and C3 are selected. So the entire range B3 colon C3 that is selected and you see the fill handle on the bottom right. right? And then once the fill handle is selected, uh, once the fill handle is there, all you need to do is to simply drag the fill handle. That is click, hold it and then drag it till you see 2021 coming up. Okay. Now here you're seeing that we are using the fill handle for something slightly different from what we used it for earlier. Earlier we used the fill handle to do a copy paste. Right? We would put a formula in one cell and then drag the fill handle and that formula will get copied and pasted to the entire region over which we are dragging it. Here we are doing something different. So here what we are doing is we've got two cells into which we have put values and when you drag the fill handle what Excel is going to do is it's going to figure out the difference between these two and it's going to replicate the difference throughout the entire range. Right? So it sees here once both are selected it sees the difference between them as one and as you drag the fill handle it'll just keep adding one. Okay? If the difference was two it'll keep adding two. If the difference was ten it's going to keep adding ten. Okay? So this is a very convenient way of filling in a uniform sequence across many different cells. Okay, So that's what we're going to do. So it figured out from the fact that we entered 2017 and 2018 it's going to fill out the rest like that. Okay, So we can use this mechanism to put the values 2017 through 2021 without entering each of them uh, individually. Okay, So that takes care of the years. The next thing we need to do is to start entering the sales units. So to do that we put in here in cell, uh, so we had put the years in starting from the column B. So in column A, we're going to put sales number of units. Right? That's just the title for what information is there on that row. Now when you enter this into A4, it's possible that your column A was not wide enough to accommodate sales number of units. And therefore, whenever you type in text into a cell, and the text doesn't fit into the cell and if the adjacent cell is empty it's simply going to spill in. right? So what you're seeing is that although sales number of units is in column A it is simply spilling over into column B because B4 is currently not occupied and therefore it feels okay it's okay I can just spill over into this. Okay? So it's spilled over so what we want to do is once it spills over what you want to do is to make sure that the column A is wide enough to accommodate it. Okay? So there are two ways you can uh, rectify this issue. That is you have to make the column wide enough, column A wide enough so that this whole text is, fits into that column. One way to do that is to simply take your mouse between the two columns AB near the line. So once you do it, once you put the mouse near that line, you'll see the mouse uh, cursor changes to a different shape. Right? The cursor ch shape changes and at that point when the cursor shape changes if you double click then the column will become wide enough to accommodate the widest piece of text within the column. Right? So you can go there, uh, position your cursor here, the moment the shape of the cursor changes just double click it will become wide enough. Alternately the moment the shape of the cursor changes you can just drag it to make it as wide as you want it to be. So you can use either approach to uh, use the column divider to make the column wide enough. To see how this process would actually work in Excel, I have recreated the spreadsheet here. 
So what I'm saying is I've got sales number of units and it has spilled over into column uh, column B. So in order to resize, I go here. See, this is what I meant when I said I put the cursor on the column divider and the shape of the cursor changes. I can either just drag it, that is hold it down and drag it, or I can just, when the shape of the cursor has changed, I can just double click and the column becomes wide enough. Okay, so you can use either of these two approaches to make sure that the column is wide enough to accommodate the text. Now, uh, this text is not overlapping or spilling over into column B. Okay, let us now move forward and enter the sales units for the years 2017 through 2021. Okay, so first we want to enter the number of sales units for the year 2017. Okay, now one thing we could do is to enter the value 100,000 right here. Okay, so that's an assumption, but we are putting it right here. Later on, we'll go ahead and change it. Okay, now if you enter 100,000 just like that, the commas are not going to appear. It'll simply appear as 100,000 with no commas. Now, when you enter large numbers, it's always a good idea to ensure that they are comma separated so that they are easy to read. Now, you shouldn't put in the commas yourself. Of course, you can, it doesn't matter, but it's just extra work. So what you can instead do is select the cell and then if you're in the home tab of Excel, you will see that uh, there's a set of controls up here and one of them is a comma. You click on the comma and it'll automatically put in the commas at the right places. Okay, let's move on to computing the number of units that we are going to sell in the years 2018 up to 2021. Okay, so we are already told that the sales annual growth rate of sales in quantity is 2.25%. So my question is, should we put in this formula for C4 equals B4 times 1 plus 2.25%, right? This is what we were taught earlier in terms of how to do percentages, right? So should we put in this formula or do you think there's something else we need to do, right? I would say pause the video, think a little bit about this See if you agree with what I'm saying or if you think that something else should be done. Once you have some solution, continue the video. Okay, I'm pretty sure you realize that we should not enter this formula here. That would be a pretty bad thing to do. Why? Because we want to isolate assumptions. We don't want to have numbers like 2.25% in our formulas. Okay, the one is different. The one is coming because it is B4 plus B4 times 2.25% and when we factorize it uh, using the distributive law, we say B4 times 1 plus. So that one is fine, but this 2.25% simply should not be in the formula because it's an assumption. It may change. Somebody may come along and say, you know what, we did market research and we, we have figured out that our annual sales growth rate is only going to be 1.2%, right? Then you have to go and change that and that's going to affect everything else in the spreadsheet. Okay, so we want to isolate our assumptions right here. So let's do one thing. Let's create a separate area in our spreadsheet. So here I'm using the columns H and I and I am putting in our assumptions explicitly in this area. Okay, so we are saying sales units in 2017, 100,000. This is, all of these are assumptions we got from our earlier uh, slide. So sales growth rate 2.25 percent, sales price in 2017 10 dollars, sales price growth rate 5 percent, etc. We have all of this. Okay, so now we can go back and write our formulas in terms of the addresses of these values. Right. So the first thing we are going to do is instead of the hundred thousand that we had put into B4 earlier, right? The hundred thousand is already already there in column H. Right. It's here. It's in cell I3. So what we now want to do is instead of putting 100,000 there, we're going to change that formula and say, well, that's going to be equals I3. Okay. Now, of course, if you want, you can make this an absolute address, but we're not going to copy this formula anywhere. So whether you make it absolute or whether you keep it relative doesn't really matter. Okay. So that's fine. We've got this. Okay, so now that we have isolated the assumptions, the sales in 2017 is included in the assumptions and hence we don't want to enter it as 100,000 once again. 
and also have it in assumptions right because then we may think oh somebody comes and says this uh, it's not going to be 100000 units it's going to be 125000 units you make a change in your assumptions but if you had put here the hard coded the value of 100000 here then changing the assumption is have not going to have an effect here right so uh, instead of uh, just keeping it as 100000 here we are going to go and put in a formula and say equals i3 and because you say equals i3 and i3 contains 100000 this will now reflect that 100000 okay and this is a point i had made why not absolute address because we are not going to be copying this particular formula anywhere so it doesn't matter if we put a relative or an absolute address here let us now compute the sales quantities for the years 2018 to 2021 okay so clearly the question we are asking is the sales quantity for 2017 is already here we had said equals i3 that's fine so now what we want to do is to put in a formula here to compute the sales quantity for the year 2018 what formula do you think will work here think about it and continue the video after you have a suggested solution to that okay so clearly what we want to do is to say equals b4 times 1 plus dollar i dollar 4 right because i4 if you recall i4 contains 2.25 percent the percentage growth rate in quantity 2.25 percent so here we will put the absolute address of i4 right so of the percentage growth rate in units so b4 times 1 plus dollar i dollar 4 that's the formula we want to put in here okay now why do we use an absolute address here and why is this relative because now for the years 2019 through 2021 we are going to copy and paste this formula okay so that's why we use an absolute address of course as you uh, copy and paste it you don't want this i4 to get changed because the percentage increase in sales unit percentage growth in sales units that's in cell i4 you don't want that to change so you want to keep that absolute so dollar i dollar 4 but this b4 we want it to change because when you compute for 2019 you want it to be c4 when you compute for 2020 you want it to be d4 so this we will leave as relative okay so that's the idea here so because we have isolated the assumptions we can use the address i4 here dollar i dollar 4 okay let's continue so we have entered that formula here equals b4 times 1 plus dollar i dollar 4 right and here i'm showing you that i'm editing the formula right in the cell itself which means i double click in the cell and enter this formula of course the way in which i can enter b4 is i can type in b4 or while i'm there i just click on this cell and excel is going to put in b4 automatically and then of course i type in the star put in the parentheses and then put 1 plus dollar i dollar 4 either I can type the dollar I dollar 4 or I can just click on the cell I4 so Excel will put I4 there and then we can use F4 repeatedly to cycle through the addresses and we can just accept it when the dollar I dollar 4 appears okay so that will put in the formula for 2018 okay and these we have already discussed why did we leave B4 as a relative address because we are going to copy it and when we put the formula for the you know for 2019 we want this to become c4 okay so we want it to automatically change so leaving it as a relative address works beautifully okay so that's that's really what we're saying here so now we are in a position to simply copy and paste the formula for 2019 to 2021 so again we just want to do a copy paste so we can just use the fill handle grab it and simply drag it okay so that will do the job for us and we get uh, these results okay we get uh, all of these numbers and we got these numbers simply by dragging the fill handle okay and then now we can do the same thing for the price so you can say price and here it's price is dollar 10 and we get this by putting the absolute address of the cell where the price is okay and that should be probably i4 dollar i dollar 4 and then here we are entering this formula and dollar i dollar 6 contains the percentage growth rate in price 
so that's fine and then we can just uh, drag it for the remaining years okay so you can do that and this is what I was talking about earlier when you see the number of decimal places we you know we've got much more than we want we it's a price so we want only two decimal places so what we can do is either change the number of decimal places or better still select all these cells which is cell C5 through F5 and once again here on top if you're in the home tab you'll see there's a dollar sign so if you just click on the dollar sign it'll convert them all to currencies okay and of course it'll display a dollar sign and it'll automatically display only two decimal places that works well okay it also automatically rounds the numbers for display that works very well okay so once again as I have said earlier if you want to select the cell C3 C5 through F5 you can uh, just select one cell and simply drag your mouse and select all the remaining cells or of course you can hold your shift key down select the cell hold shift down and keep on moving the cursor uh, to select the remaining cells right or hold shift down and simply click on the end point whatever you want you can select all of these once you have selected all of these clicking on the dollar sign is going to format all of those cells as currencies okay what I suggest is I'll stop this video here and continue this case study from the next video but before you begin to watch the next video it'll be a really good idea for you to replicate whatever I have done in this video and come up to this point right make sure that you have you have completed all of the steps that I have demonstrated thus far in the case study and then you will be in a position to continue with the next video that takes this project further